A Gentleman in Moscow, A Journey Through Decades of Change. Summary Book. In the year 1922, amidst the turmoil of the aftermath of the Russian Revolution, Count Alexander Rostov, a man of refined manners and aristocratic lineage, finds himself facing an unusual sentence. Accused by the Bolshevik government of being an unrepentant relic of the old regime, he is not condemned to prison or execution. Instead, his fate is sealed to a lifetime of confinement within the opulent confines of the Metropole Hotel, a grand establishment situated just across from the Kremlin in Moscow. For a man accustomed to the vast estates and luxurious lifestyle of his former life, being confined to a single room, albeit a spacious one, might seem like a cruel punishment. Yet, Count Rostov, undeterred by his circumstances, chooses to adapt with grace and dignity. He accepts the judgment with stoicism, declaring, a sentence of life imprisonment without the indignity of prison walls. I consider it a privilege, not a hardship. With his world shrunk to the walls of the hotel, the Count embarks on a personal odyssey of self-discovery and resilience. He transforms his small room into a haven of culture and refinement, filled with his personal belongings salvaged from his former life. He engages in intellectual pursuits, reading extensively and hosting informal salons within his room, where he gathers with a motley crew of hotel residents and visitors, engaging in stimulating conversations on various topics. Among these newfound acquaintances is a young girl named Nina, whose father, a diplomat, has recently taken a temporary posting in Moscow. Nina, curious and yearning for adventure, forms an unlikely bond with the Count. They embark on secret explorations throughout the hidden corners of the metropole, forging a friendship that transcends age and circumstance. As years pass, the world outside the hotel undergoes dramatic changes. The once familiar Moscow transforms under the grip of the new regime. Shops and businesses are nationalized, the aristocracy is ostracized, and whispers of hardship and famine begin to reach the ears of the hotel residents. Through it all, the Count remains a constant presence within the metropole, a silent observer of the shifting tides of history. He witnesses the ebb and flow of guests, the changing faces of the hotel staff, and the whispers of momentous events unfolding outside the hotel walls. He becomes a pillar of stability and wisdom for those seeking solace and guidance within the microcosm of the hotel. Within the walls of the metropole, the Count discovers a new purpose, not in grand gestures or worldly pursuits, but in the everyday kindnesses and meaningful connections he fosters. He utilizes his knowledge and wit to help people navigate the complexities of their lives, offering friendship and support during times of uncertainty. The years continue to roll by, and the face of Moscow undergoes an ever more drastic transformation. The city grapples with the harsh realities of a centrally planned economy, leading to shortages and rationing. The once vibrant art scene becomes stifled by the strictures of socialist realism, while fear and suspicion cast a long shadow over society. Within the metropole, the Count and Nina's friendship continues to blossom. Nina, now a young woman, experiences the limitations imposed by the new social order firsthand. Unable to pursue her dreams of studying abroad, she finds solace and guidance in the Count's wisdom and stories of the world beyond the hotel walls. Meanwhile, the metropole itself becomes a microcosm of the changing times. The opulent lobby gives way to utilitarian furniture, the once grand dining room offers limited menus, and the staff struggles to maintain the hotel's former grandeur with dwindling resources. Despite the growing hardships, the Count remains a source of inspiration for those around him. He organizes cultural evenings within his room, featuring recitals, poetry readings, and intellectual discussions. These gatherings become a haven for the residents, offering a temporary escape from the harsh realities of the outside world. One fateful day, the Metropole receives an unexpected guest, a renowned American jazz musician. The musician, ostracized in his own country due to his political beliefs, finds acceptance and appreciation within the hotel walls. The Count, with his vast knowledge of music and history, 
strikes up a friendship with the musician, and together they organize impromptu jam sessions, filling the hotel with the forbidden sounds of American jazz. This event, however, attracts the attention of the authorities. The hotel is raided, and the musician is apprehended. The Count, though not directly implicated, feels a sense of responsibility for the incident. He realizes that even the carefully constructed haven of the Metropole cannot offer complete immunity from the outside world's turmoil. As the years drift into the late 1930s, the shadow of World War II looms large. The hotel gears up for war, serving as a makeshift hospital for wounded soldiers. The Count, unable to fight on the front lines, dedicates himself to supporting the war effort and offering comfort to the wounded and their families. Nina, now a young woman on the cusp of adulthood, volunteers at the makeshift hospital, working alongside the Count. Their bond deepens as they navigate the anxieties and uncertainties of wartime. The war brings its own set of challenges and tragedies, but through it all, the Count's unwavering spirit and Nina's unwavering support provide a beacon of hope within the hotel. As the tide of World War II turns in favor of the Soviets, a sense of triumph and relief washes over the Metropole. However, the victory comes at a heavy cost. The war leaves behind a trail of devastation, and the country grapples with rebuilding its shattered infrastructure and healing the wounds of war. The Count, now an elderly gentleman, continues to be a pillar of strength and wisdom within the hotel. He witnesses the gradual easing of restrictions, the return of a semblance of normalcy, and the tentative blossoming of hope for a brighter future. Nina, having witnessed the horrors of war firsthand, embarks on a journey of self-discovery. She chooses to pursue a career in social work, dedicating herself to helping those most affected by the war's aftermath. The Count, ever the supportive mentor, encourages her endeavors and continues to be a source of guidance and inspiration. The Metropole, too, undergoes a slow process of renewal. Renovations are undertaken, and the hotel gradually regains some of its former luster. However, the scars of the past remain, a constant reminder of the tumultuous times the hotel and its inhabitants have endured. As the years progress, the Count's health begins to decline. Facing mortality with the same dignity and grace he has displayed throughout his confinement, he reflects on his life's journey. He considers the unexpected path his life has taken, the lessons learned, and the profound connections he has formed within the confines of the hotel. On a peaceful evening, surrounded by Nina and other close friends within the familiar walls of his room, the Count passes away. His departure leaves a void in the lives of those who knew him, but his legacy of resilience, kindness, and enduring spirit lives on. Nina, now a mature woman, carries the Count's lessons and values close to her heart. She continues her work in social work, her life shaped by the wisdom and guidance she received from her unlikely friend confined within the walls of the Metropole. As she reflects on his life, she sees not a man trapped but a man who found purpose and connection within the most unexpected of circumstances. As I turn the final page, and for our audiobook listeners, reach the end of this narration, I offer a heartfelt thank you for joining me on this journey through the life of Count Rostov. His story, chronicled within the grand walls of the Metropole Hotel, is a testament to the human capacity for adaptation and the ability to find meaning, even in the most unexpected places. Remember, dear listener, the true measure of a life is not defined by physical freedom, but by the richness of experience, the depth of connection, and the strength of the human spirit. May Count Rostov's tale, whether experienced through the written word or the spoken, leave a lasting impression, inspiring you to embrace the opportunities that life presents, no matter the circumstances you face. The End